Amazon's new big-budget TV series set in Tolkien's Middle-earth is currently in production. In this video, I'd like to discuss what we know so far about this series and to share my thoughts about what I am excited about as well as my concerns. All the way back in November of 2017, Amazon first announced that they had acquired the global television rights for The Lord of the Rings. The head of scripted series for Amazon Studios stated in their press release that the development of the show would be a collaborative effort with the Tolkien Estate and Trust, HarperCollins, and New Line. Amazon Studios paid a hefty sum for the rights to produce this series, shelling out a staggering $250 million to be able to produce this show, which will span at least five seasons with the potential for a spin-off. The first season is said to be around 20 episodes long, and Amazon has already greenlit Season 2 for production. I am actually really glad the first season will be a more conventional number of episodes for a series. What has usually been the norm for a streaming service original show are seasons lasting around 10 episodes. This formula works for some shows, yet others seem to suffer due to a lack of time for meaningful story and character development. The first two seasons are estimated to cost upwards of $500 million to produce and market. Amazon is certainly betting big on this series, and considering the overwhelming popularity of the Lord of the Rings franchise, it's not too outlandish of a bet. The films were definitely a gamble for New Line Cinema considering they agreed to filming all three big budget films at once, and as we all know, that decision certainly paid off. The question is, will the series have a similar success with general audiences? It's hard to say at this point. As most fans have come to learn, not every attempt by studios to expand upon beloved franchises have worked out well. In regards to Tolkien's Middle-earth, the Lord of the Rings film trilogy is widely held as an incredible adaptation of the source material. All the films, and especially with the extended scenes added, are considered to be one of the best book-to-film adaptations ever produced. But not all offerings set in Tolkien's world have reached that same level. The Hobbit trilogy of movies, for example, while having a lot of beautifully adapted moments, as a whole, it does not come close to what The Lord of the Rings achieved. Like butter spread over too much bread, stretching the singular book The Hobbit into three films seemed to be solely motivated by money instead of keeping with the source material. I am worried this same attitude will continue going forward with this new series, and I'm not the only one with this concern. John Rhys Davies, our beloved dwarf Gimli, told Den of Geek in an interview that this new series seems like a cash grab, that it's not about doing it better, it's about making more money. Harsh words indeed, and an understandable concern considering how other movie studios have treated much beloved franchise properties. For instance, Disney shelled out $4 billion for Lucasfilm and Star Wars, and in a rush to make back their money, they failed to conceive an epic, cohesive story that expanded upon and enriched the lore of Star Wars that would resonate throughout the years with fans. Having said that, I am choosing to remain cautiously optimistic for the time being. In a series of social media posts, it was confirmed that filming would indeed take place in New Zealand, which is an obvious choice. One post, which included Amazon's expanding interactive map of Middle-earth, revealed that the series would take place in the time that's known as the Second Age, which spans 3,500 years, beginning with the banishment of Sauron's one-time master Morgoth, and concluding with the downfall of Sauron's army depicted at the beginning of Jackson's Fellowship of the Ring. It has also been confirmed by Tolkien scholar and series supervisor Tom Shippey that the Tolkien estate will have veto power on plot ideas that stray far from Tolkien's vision and the main shape of the Second Age. The show also cannot depict any events of the Third Age, which is when The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings takes place. This gives me reason for optimism, as it makes clear the seriousness that is being taken with the handling of this beloved source material. It seems clear that the estate is still very much involved with the creative process, and above all, wants Tolkien's work honored. I find myself going back and forth between optimism and pessimism in regards to the news coming out about this series. The showrunners chosen as writers for the series, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, are woefully inexperienced and definitely a cause of concern for me. There's no denying their passion for this project, however, 
And I am sure they are definitely feeling the pressure from Amazon to create something amazing that's worthy to be called a faithful and respectful expansion of the lore of Middle-earth. The two showrunners said in a joint statement to The Hollywood Reporter that the rich world that J.R.R. Tolkien created is filled with majesty and heart, wisdom and complexity. We are absolutely thrilled to be partnering with Amazon to bring it to life anew. We feel like Frodo setting out from the Shire with a great responsibility in our care. It is the beginning of the adventure of a lifetime. I sincerely hope this isn't just rhetoric, but instead that they can channel every bit of their passion and appreciation for Tolkien's world into their writing. In July of 2019, more of the creative team was announced. J.A. Bayona, director of The Orphanage, The Impossible, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, is the director of the first two episodes of the season, and will also serve as executive producer. I am glad there is more experience added to this writing team that was also announced, whose collective accolades include Breaking Bad, Hannibal, Halt and Catch Fire, Stranger Things, Toy Story 4, and Game of Thrones. Of particular interest to me in this announcement is that John Howe, the illustrator and concept artist that worked on the Lord of the Rings trilogy, will also be working on this series. This news definitely fills me with excitement. One of the things that always stood out to me and that I always admired about the trilogy was the stunning imagery. There were certain visuals that literally looked like illustrations taken right from the printed page and presented on screen. The concepts he created are unforgettable and I couldn't be more excited that he's returned for this series. The soundtrack composer hasn't been announced yet, but I really hope that Howard Shore will also return for this. His music and the themes he created for the trilogy, like all great scores, are characters unto themselves and play a crucial role in storytelling. Early rumors were that the show was going to be focused on the adventures of a young Aragorn, but that rumor was debunked when it was confirmed that the series would take place in the Second Age, thousands of years before his birth. I for one was really glad about this news. I'm not too keen on the premise of prequels in general, as most seem to focus on just filling in the blanks regarding a character's past and connecting the dots to story threads we're familiar with, rather than crafting a story that stands on its own. To me, it doesn't make for a very compelling story. I feel the show will have more success if it's able to stand on its own and not have to be too heavily tied into the minutia of established canon. In regards to the status of filming, the first two episodes were completed and the show went on a planned hiatus in mid-March for a few months to work on the scripts for season two and to evaluate the material that had already been shot. So even though filming would have been shut down anyways to comply with health and safety regulations, it looks like they are still on schedule with production as filming has been able to continue in New Zealand under certain conditions. Though it's not expected they'll start filming again until late this summer of 2020. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Jennifer Salke, the head of Amazon Studios, confirmed that Amazon is still targeting a 2021 debut for the series. In the way of casting, there are quite a few people already slated to be a part of this series. To see the full cast, be sure to check out the link in the description. For now, I thought I would focus on those that have been confirmed as lead actors. There's no concrete information regarding the roles the actors will be portraying, but of the leading cast, there is British actor Maxim Baldry from Doctor Who and Years and Years, and his role has yet to be identified. There is also Robert Arameo from Game of Thrones, who is playing a character currently known as Beldor. Another lead character, with the current name of Tyra, will be played by Markella Cavanaugh from The Cry. Also, Joseph Maul from Game of Thrones is set to play the show's main villain, Orin. None of these names are from Tolkien's work, so it's hard to say if they are set to play new original characters, or if these names are just a ruse to avoid potential spoilers. I tend to think that they are code names. Concerning the main villain, while I doubt Joseph Maul will be playing the Dark Lord Sauron himself in season one, I do hope this major character will be featured at some point in the series, as his rise to power is a significant part of the second age of Middle-earth, and would make for some incredible storytelling and visuals. Probably the biggest casting news so far, however, is the rumor that Morphic Clark will be playing a younger Galadriel. However, this has yet to be confirmed by the streaming giant. 
I would think that any stories involving the more famous figures in Tolkien's books would have to go through intense scrutiny with the estate, considering their veto privileges. So it would make sense if they're hesitant to confirm this right now. Speaking of these famous characters, Ian McKellen has said he'd be willing to return to the role of Gandalf, though he hasn't been asked yet. He joked that since Gandalf is 7,000 years old, he's not too old. I certainly would love to see him make an appearance. I do hope the cast and crew involved in this new series realize the enormous task they have set before them to faithfully bring Middle-earth to life once again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Lord of the Rings, Dune, and other sci-fi and fantasy content. And let me know your thoughts about this new series and what you're hoping to see from an adaptation set in the second age of Middle-earth. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.